Hey, this is Rob Walkety with Mongrel Bees. I want to talk about my um, swarm boxes. So I'm going to try to keep some of the treatment-free politics aside and just talk about the swarm traps. So uh, this year, <clears throat> I'm going to use my dark wax instead of the light wax. The light wax I try to save for um, chapstick and hand lotion, stuff like that. Um, it's premium capping wax, real pretty, it smells great. Um, I think it's a waste to put it in my swarm trap uh, attractant. Um, this stuff, if you look at my other video on wax rendering of old comb using a steam wax extractor, this is what that came from. Um, it's still pretty good wax. It smells pretty good. Um, and uh, I get a lot of it through old comb when I do cutouts and, and recycle my frames. But I think that it's probably going to have a little bit more smell to it for the bees. Let's talk about smell a little bit. Uh, so I use lemongrass oil. I use organic just so I don't have to worry about it. It's only a couple of bucks more. I don't think you have to, but you know, it's, it's easy insurance to make sure you're getting a good product. The reason lemongrass oil works is, um, I've been saving my, started saving my queens to get some queen mandibular pheromone, but there's seven chemicals in the, in the homing scent that bees use to identify another hive. Um, of those seven chemicals, lemongrass oil actually has five. So, uh, even though bees are great smellers and they're highly sophisticated in that, in that smell, uh, organization. Uh, I think there's two, I have two hypotheses, hypotheses about what, why that works. One, um, it's five out of seven. If you and I go into a Bed Bath & Beyond and we smell a candle that says it's um, sugar cookies or cookie dough or, you know, chocolate brownies, that may or may not have any of the ingredients of chocolate brownies in it, but there are enough chemical profiles that it fools us. I mean, some of those things just smell awesome and they smell just like what they say. Sometimes they don't. For the bees, five out of seven chemicals um, seems like it's close enough. It, it works, we know it works. The other thing is um, in the actual homing scent, it's possible that the homing scent biodegrades of two of, two, of the five, two of the seven chemicals. I don't know that for sure. Um, somebody would have to test out whether or not of seven chemicals, if two of those are more likely to break down in, in nature and, and break into its separate atomic structure or not. I don't know. Um, lemongrass oil works. Uh, also putting old comb in there, um, that works. So in my swarm traps, I put in one frame of old comb, five frames of just foundationless. Um, I will grab one sip and show you real quick. So, um, the bees have some really particular rules about swarm, uh, about uh, what they want to move into. Um, they want it to smell like an old another hive, if possible, because they know it was at least good then. The second thing is they want volume. So, uh, my swarm traps actually come down to about right here. They're uh, off of the website uh, horizontalhives.com. It's a great website talking about swarms. Um, I would encourage you to go look for that. But in my trap, um, I'll have open volume down here, open volume here with a just a starter strip to get them, get them going and trying to keep that, that comb going straight. And then one frame on the outside of a uh, drawn comb. And what that's gonna do is, no, normally they'll start building right from the middle. They don't build it from the other one for whatever reason. It's on the outside just to make sure that the bees feel like there's plenty of open volume here. Having just this bar here, like five bars here in the middle, it doesn't seem like it's really an obstruction for them. They, hopefully they just ignore it. But swarm traps need to be of a certain volume, certain size, um, preferably not underground. So I hang mine about six, eight feet high. That way if people walk under it, the, the flight path isn't right in their face. And then um, an easily defensible hole. So you want it to be mostly closed up with one small hole in the front. I've been closing my entrances off smaller and smaller because out of every 20 hives, I end up getting one or two of those European hornets. Um, they are big, fat bodied, and, and those queens are big. Um, I feel like if I can figure out what the queen size is and get it just right to where the opening of that hive is smaller than the European hornet queen, I won't lose as many hives to those stupid hornets, or technically wasps. So let's talk about um, the swarm attractant, what I do. There's a recipe out there. You'll see it many places. It's um, usually a quarter cup of olive oil. I use uh, refined coconut oil. So it's quarter cup oil, two tablespoons beeswax, and 20 to 40 drops of lemongrass.
grass oil. I don't know why it varies so much in these. There's no scientific formula. I like to um, do it that way because essentially um, it makes a paste. So um, here's some that's slightly warm, but it makes a paste. And what I do is I just open up my swarm traps, I put my frames in, and I smear the paste in the back side of the, the swarm trap. And the reason that I make a paste is that a lot of people will say, well, you can put lemon dress oil on some uh, cotton balls and put it in a Ziploc bag. You can do that. Um, you close up the bag almost all the way and hopefully it vaporizes over time. Um, it doesn't last that long. You can also buy a commercial lure called uh, Swarm Commander. I know people have had very good success with that. I haven't used it myself. Um, seems a little pricey uh, when I can do this for next to nothing. And I have a lot of Swarm Traps. So what I do, and I'm gonna tilt this down so you can see it. First off, I'm gonna show you um, the little pot right here. And this is a uh, Hamilton Beach uh, mini crock pot. That's what I use to warm all my wax Make for all my projects. It makes it super easy. It's a perfect temp. In fact, um, you actually have to keep the little tiny lid on it, this one, um, to get it to actually melt. So it's, it's absolutely a perfect temp without burning it. Um, so that's what I use to heat up the wax. And then uh, I made a little dipper. So I use a lot of these paper cups. Um, I just cut around and left a little tab there so I don't burn myself getting it in there. And then I've got a small tin here. Um, I also use mason jars. Uh, you want to seal it up so to keep the smell in as much as possible. But what I do is I make a couple of these and um, I keep, keep them in my vehicles. I have one in the truck and one in the car. So if I'm on a side of town where one of my traps are, I can actually grab a little bit and you know smear it on the side of the, the box just to make sure that the the amount of smell is out there and it's still strong, but not too strong. Um, that's one of the other problems is people try to dump a lot of oil and stuff in there and it gets too small. So you've got, the recipe is about one fourth cup of uh, oil, coconut oil or olive oil. Um, I Shoot, I'd, I'd suggest even, um, not necessarily, the olive oil could have a smell to it that's beneficial. I don't know, just because it's plant-based, but almost all the oils we use are plant-based. I would not recommend using anything like tallow or pork lard, because then you're catching bears maybe instead of bees. So we've got um, a quarter cup of the coconut oil, and then I'm gonna get probably more than two tablespoons of the beeswax because unfortunately I did not melt the coconut oil and so it's going to make it a little bit hard to blend this. So I'm going to pour that in there. It's actually a little bit cold in the garage. It's like 67 in here. Um, and I'll save that and peel it off later. And now I'm going to take just a wooden spacer. You can use a paint stick or whatever. Kind of hot right now. It's in my hands holding this little metal can, but it's not that bad. I'm used to it. And you're basically going to blend in and melt the, all the oil into the beeswax. The cool thing about coconut oil is that it melts at room temperature. By adding, and again, you may or may not want to do this, but by adding this in to hot wax, I'm bringing the temperature of the wax down at the same time I'm, I'm liquefying the uh, coconut oil. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be left with a slightly cooled version of this mix. Now, the reason you don't you want to do that is um, you don't want to vaporize the lemongrass oil. If you vaporize all of the active ingredients, there's no point in putting it in there. You just if there's a carrier oil or something underneath, that you've gotten rid of all the other attractants. So I've got it pretty liquefied now, and now uh, I'm going to add the lemongrass oil. Now, if you if you want to make it really well blended. You can heat up the coconut oil first, mix the two, but then you're going to want to stir until you start seeing it glaze over. At that point, you know that it's cool enough to where the some part of the uh, mix is, is cool enough to where you're not going to actually vaporize the oil out. And then I'm going to take this, and it's supposed to be 20 or 40 drops, but nobody wants to sit here and watch me drop this one at a time. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 1, 2, a couple more for extra. All right, now you're just going to keep blending this. 
So you're going to keep stirring it. And as you stir it, especially if it was a hot mixture before, it's going to start glazing over. Um, I'm sure somebody could put this in a, an ice bath, but I think that what would happen is the wax would actually cool to the sides. In fact, on this thing, the, the wax is actually adhering to the side on the inside faster than I want it to. But um, as I stir it, it's actually getting a little bit thicker. And as it gets thicker, and this will take you a little bit of time, as it gets thicker, it's gonna encapsulate that lemongrass oil. And that's what you want. You want the lemongrass oil to be encapsulated so that when you put it on the hive, instead of all of it being released, the oil has to work itself through the wax. And that's gonna happen on a daily basis because what's gonna happen is the hive is gonna cool and heat up every day during swarm season. And every time it heats up, it's gonna create like micro cracks and stuff. And that's gonna release a little bit more scent attractant. So that's why we put it in a mixture of wax. Now, you could put it in straight beeswax. The problem with that is to have the beeswax liquid enough to actually absorb the oil, you're, you're, you would end up vaporizing the oil. So beeswax has a much higher melting point than any of your carrier oils. So what you're doing is you're actually artificially bringing down the temperature, the, the liquid liquefying temperature of the wax. You're bringing that down to a point that it can take the lemongrass oil and then adding in another softer oil you're actually making sure that you can actually spread it so here's the thing this is I made a mess so it's a good thing i have paper um the thing is this sucker is really hard to deal with in fact i was drawing some of my swarm traps in the cold because our swarm trap season so early this year um i couldn't actually get this wax to actually break up enough to stick onto the frames because it was so cold. Um, trying to, if this thing was my swarm attractant, I would just be taking chunks of it and, and trying to drop blocks of it inside the hive. So doing it this way, I'm left with uh, a paste that usually on a warm day, I can actually stick my finger in there and pull out what I need to. But normally what I do is I just keep a screwdriver, a flat bladed standard screwdriver in the truck. And um, whenever I need to, I can just dip the screwdriver, actually my hive tool, that's, that's what I normally end up doing, is I'll take the hive tool, scrape out some, and then actually put it on the hive. Um, I had to actually make some more this year because um, I grew a big beard. a big beard <laughs> and I was using it as mustache wax and uh I dropped I dropped you guys down below my workbench uh so sorry about that hope you feel better uh so anyway that's what I do sorry for the long-winded um I can't seem to keep these short I talk too much but um hopefully and you enjoy the video and I'm trying to figure out where the camera is so I look at you instead of myself and um I'll do another video on how I hang the storm traps thanks bye